Hello and welcome to another episode of All About the Balls, this sports podcast that doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, and we've been missing in action. Apologies, Gareth yes. and I. I mean, I'd love, I love it to be for a really good reason, like we were in Japan or something like that. And we we messed up the time zones, or we were doing something amazing and debaucherous, but we were just really busy at work, <laughs> and yeah. uh, sadly, sadly, couldn't find find time. Well, to actually, pop. I, I blame um me. I blame your trains. Yeah, because. And then my lack of planning. So actually, well, I think we've got to share the ownership there, really, to be fair. Yeah, look, I mean, we are desperately looking for sponsorship, but I tell you who can, mm. who can, who can sod right off, and that's London Northwestern. God damn. <laughs> what a pointless, pointless bunch of. Anyway, don't, because yes. I will just rant for, for an hour. Okay. And no ranting. No ranting. Our subscribers got... will be severely disappointed. We've got exciting stuff to talk about. So. We have, we have. I mean, so the big news, the big news is that David Warner hit a century in the uh, in the T Twenty against uh, Sri Lanka, and that is yes. that's huge. Yes. I mean, that's huge. You know, Australian um, sport is maybe they should get Justin Langer to coach Australian rugby. Well, I mean. <laughs> it's an obvious line, but he can't do much worse than Michael exactly. Checker. <laughs> I mean, <Bridge>. damn, <laughs> damn checks. Oh. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, look, there are other sports going on in the world, apparently, mm -hmm. and we're going to touch yeah. on them very briefly. W one that has absolutely um, struck the headlines, and, and it's pretty impressive to take the headlines away from the rugby right now, particularly in England, but it's the, it's the Arsenal performance over the weekend, and more, yes. more specifically... Um, their uh, their skipper, mate. You are our, our football spe specialist. Tell us, uh, tell us all about the the woes at uh, at, at well, Highbury any, at the moment. Anyone, <clears throat> anyone who didn't see, um, I mean, there was some bizarre things going on. Arsenal went two 0 up after what I think nine minutes against Palace cruising at home. Cruising looked like it looked like it was dead and buried. Four uh, points in the, the bag. game. Yes, and and Arsenal capitulated as they tend to to do on a they did fairly Arsenal. regular basis. Um, yeah. And Granit Xhaka, who's just well, I believe a couple of weeks ago been voted the captain by um, probably the the same committee as the Brexit committee. I can only imagine. Yeah, I think um, it, or, or I think maybe it was part of some Strictly Come Dancing poll or something like that. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they just tied it in together. But he, yeah, um, his he's just been voted was captain. Better than uh, the Nozil, so, uh, so he's look, he he's not been very, he's not very good. Um, <laughs> call a spade a spade. <laughs> yes, uh, call it a Xhaka, a Xhaka. Um <laughs> But he he's been, he's not been great for Arsenal. He's had a couple of decent performances, but in all in all, not been great. And he um, he had another pretty pretty poor performance, or substituted by. Uh, Unite Emery. Um, to which point the whole of the Emirates, actually, that's not true. Not the whole of the Emirates. The Crystal Palace fans wanted him to stay on. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but all his home fans were started booing him. Um, yeah. To which point he, uh, sort of gave them a wave in terms of like, come on, up the volume, which was bizarre. Um, then I can't hear you gesture and then as he was going off he took his shirt off and i thought he was going to throw it yeah um didn't he throw the armband the captain's armband i think did he hand it over vigorously yeah I, yeah just yeah he's just ro robustly handed yeah. it over. <laughs> um but let's be honest if he'd thrown that shirt <gasps> he would he would have been a goner not a gooner a goner. Oy. Oy, oy. um and I mean, there's just been so much chat. Ian Wright on Match of the Day 2 was going ballistic. Disgusted. Uh, he was disgusted. I think a lot of, um, who you mentioned, the Arsenal fan TV oh, guys. Oh, mate, if, if you're not watching Arsenal fan TV on YouTube on a Monday morning, then I, I, you're missing out on some of the finest punditry in sport. Absolutely. Robbie as host, DT, very angry man, DT. Very angry yeah. man. Quite scary as well, actually. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming Arsenal fan TV didn't exist in the in the heyday of the 2003-04 season. Because um, uh, I would have been interesting to see if if, yeah. if, if, it, if DT would have been as angry then. Well, I'm I, sure not. I, sure, I think, surely not. I think it existed. I just don't think YouTube existed. So I think it was mainly like, right. you know, in a pub right. somewhere with a few of the lads just I sort subscribe. of getting, yeah. getting, getting angry with each other. But... Um, 
Yeah, I mean, that has been one of the greatest things that the internet has given us is Arsenal fan TV. Absolutely I mean, brilliant. It's shocking, shocking on his behalf. Um, he's captain, whether he, whether he agrees with the booing or not, it's irrelevant. You've yeah. just got to take it on the chin. You're Arsenal captain. You're a captain of a Premier League team. Yeah. It happens. Yeah, I don't yeah, agree yeah. with the booing. By any means, even if someone's no. poor, I don't. I don't agree with booing anyone in your own. No, sure, 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 sure. sure. Um, but and, unless it, you're booing Frank Lampard, but then, yeah. uh, he deserves everything. Um, he I mean, gets. it it is what it is. But I think it's worth is worth noting. VAR, oh, um, don't has been all over the shop, and it's now just stands for very average average refereeing. I think oh. is, what, is what we're getting to. Um, but that the Arsenal one, they scored a they they scored a winner. Yes. Um, of which it was disallowed of what can only be described as one of the most, it's basically three players tangling up together. Yeah. And then giving, I mean, it was, I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. United had two penalties from VAR. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wilfred Zaha, Wilfred Zaha, to be fair, was going to be booked for diving mm. in reverse to a penalty, which I think was the right decision. Um, to give it as a penalty because yeah. he was fouled. It was yeah. an obvious foul. But then the other one wasn't. I mean, VAR was just all over the place. I don't, mate, like, it's, and they don't, yeah, it's, it is. I heard a very, very funny line there from Peter Crouch on Match of the Day 2 last night. Um, <laughs> cause they keep, obviously, they're not going and using the, the screen on the side of the pitch, which they are supposed to do. Right. If, if, if they're not sure what VAR is saying and they don't, don't agree as a referee on the pitch, as I, that's not what I saw at all. Yeah, but I'm going to yeah, go and look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're supposed to go and check it. They haven't used it once. Do they just the look refs. at the big big screen? Well, no, it's not on the big screen anyway. They get told in their ear. Oh right. Actually, he was fouled. To change oh, your so decision. they don't even, they don't go and watch it. No, so they they can, but they just not for some reason. So they're deferring, basically deferring the entire decision making to the process. The, 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 yeah, the, the TMO. Yeah. Um. And, and Peter Crouch's line was, that was like him at Burnley, um, sat on the bench and did very little all season. <laughs> and that is, uh, pretty much how he's described the VAR screens around, up and down the country. So, <laughs> Mark um, Crouchy. So, but yeah, so I mean, it, it was bizarre. Um, but to be, you know, before we get onto the, the, the main event of our, mm. of our dinner, Ali Gunnar Solskjaer and United are, on their way. I mean, to be fair, right we, we've always been believers. We've always been believers. Wow. Um, I, I, I was. I would like to. I would like to say one thing before we go on yeah. to this. Yeah. Can you name a squad in the top in the Premier League if they lost their six starting six of their eleven starting players who would not have had a ball run? Um, if you if you think well, you took no, six players, I mean, to, if you took six players out of Liverpool. So if you took yeah. Van Dijk, Mane, yeah. even Henderson, who's probably the worst captain to ever captain in Liverpool, um, you know, and two, three or more other players out of that squad at the same time, that uh, Liverpool would struggle. No, I mean, look, it makes a fair point. Like, if if half your first choice side isn't available for for, for one reason or another, then yeah, you so can't. You can't. All perform. that. All that said, United are two points behind fifth. Um, they are also with, like four with, points behind 15th or three points well, behind 15th or something like that. You're in marketing. You know, what <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mean, they're basically, Actually, they're basically champions. I mean, I was chatting to, um, to someone about my pod, about our pod the other night. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and I said, you know, we've got a lot, a large percentage of our listeners are, are, are from the United States. At which point he went, well, how many, people have you got and I said look that's not the point yeah, yeah. Mate, don't, 60% don't, yeah. of our <laughs> listeners it's irrelevant if it's 6 or 60 or 6,000 it could be 6,000 yeah. it could be or, or 600,000 you don't know point, you don't know yeah, yeah. so anyway it's all creative marketing <laughs> but there's, it's all there's two done of them right. there's two of them from the states if if and this is a big if if United beat Chelsea on Wednesday yeah then within 12 days they've won three games away from home and drawn against the league, the pretty much champions elect. Yeah, that, yeah, that to yeah, me, yeah, yeah. that to me shows a little bit about us at the moment. And I think, I'm all in all, I've always stuck with Ollie. You, you I have me. I mean, and I, 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 
I would love your I'm loyalty. Watching on another run of like <clears throat> losing five or six in a row. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's. If there's one thing that's true, and one thing that's certain is that if 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 you're backed by the All About the Balls team, you are screwed. Um, <laughs> watch later as, as both of us try and say that neither England nor the Springboks are going to win the World Cup final. But um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, look, it, it it is still early enough in the season to to turn it around. I, you know, I don't. I think the title Look, is, not is gone. The, well, yeah. But Champions League would be a very, very big win for Man United this season. That I would think. Be back I think on four track. We- yeah, I think four weeks ago. Mm. You know, when I really looked at the squad injuries and stuff, actually, we were in real trouble. Yeah. Um, if we can get through the next two months without very many injuries and and do a little bit in January, yeah, I think we have a chance of getting top six, probably, possibly top four. Yeah. And actually, I think in the first full season with a rebuilding going on, then next year we go for third or fourth, and then the year after we go, we try and challenge for the title. That is how I would do it. So, hear me, or he, I would be happy. Here, here you now, believe you later, yeah. 20, 20, 21, 22 season, Man United <laughs> yeah, to, 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 to be challenging for the title. It's quite sad. It's quite sad that, but yeah, that's what I think is going to happen. <laughs> no, so. do you know what, actually, and I. I, I've I've been as big a critic as, as as Man United as as anyone because it's just funny. I just find it amusing. But um, uh, I, I would actually like Solskjaer to do well. I really would like him to do well. Um, it's, it's a shame it has to happen at Man United, but I, I would like him to actually do well. Um, uh, I mean, one speaking other, yeah. speaking of challenging titles, yes. Should we just let's just move on to? Let's the just do stuff. it. And look, look, for, for, you, you can't you can't see us at home, which is good for many reasons. But Gareth is sporting his uh, his Springbox jersey, and I can see right. It's almost like it's flashing in the middle of the screen. The 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 two trophies, ninety five and two thousand and seven, um, and completely unintentional. Completely, yeah. As, so. as he as he flexes a bicep to make it glint in the light. <laughs> look, I would like to be clear. I don't have a bicep. So as I flex a shoulder upper arm area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but mate, yes, so it is. It is the 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 talk, final that we dreamt me. of but never dared so speak out loud. Springbox yes, England. Indeed. indeed. And and against against the odds. He really talk, is talk me through. Odds, yeah. Talk me through the England New Zealand semi final from your perspective. Um best game ever. Just insane. I have already sent off my proposal to Sam Underhill. Um, yes. I, I, How immense was that man? Do you know what? It, it was funny because in the lead up to the game, I was very, very, um, I guess I was, I was nervous. I was nervous because I was pretty convinced we were going out. I was like, do you know what? New Zealand absolutely destroyed Ireland. They just made them look so old and sluggish and slow. And whilst England are a very different side, I just thought, you know what? I can see England c- competing for the first half an hour, 40 minutes, maybe even 50 minutes, but then just, you know, New Zealand doing what they do, just striking twice in quick succession. Suddenly they're 14 points away and we're chasing the game and forcing things and, and whatever. Um, and there were stories in the press about, you know, England can win, but basically every player has to play the perfect game. Yeah. And they pretty much did. Like, it was just incredible. The tactics. I don't think anyone played badly. No one played badly. No, no, there, there were definitely players who had better games. Like you say, Underhill and Curry were just immense. Itoje was insane. I was going to say, um, Maro Itoje was just absolute. But even those players, animal, yeah. Animal. Like, no one had a below a sort of a 7 out of 10, 7.5 out of 10. Like, everyone some played 9, some played 10. So it was just incredible. Um uh, so, I mean, and, and it wasn't that New Zealand played badly. They just weren't allowed to play well. Uh, uh, yes, in, I know, agree, actually. There's been a lot of criticism like, oh, New Zealand never really got going. They didn't turn up. Where's the intensity? But that is all down to England's performance. Um, I couldn't agree more. And I, I, I don't, yeah. I, you know, I don't think, I don't think they were poor. I just, they weren't okay. They weren't. There. I don't think they were their best, obviously. But but I think, like you say, a chunk of that has got, or a big chunk of that has got to do with how England came out against them. Yeah, I think I think it's an insult to to the All Blacks and to England to say that the All Blacks, you know, didn't turn up, kind of thing. Um, uh, it, it was, you know, it was 
the perfect plan for Medi Jones executed perfectly by his team. It was just just brilliant. What was did you? you I assume you saw that you saw the game. Mm. What was your favourite moment? I think it was at Underhill. Mm. Um, he, I can't remember who he tackled, but it wasn't. Was it Kieran Reed? He put one just, big hit on Reed, which was which just was yeah. absolutely slammed Reed. But yeah. there was another one also where he sort of picked him up and walked him backwards. He picked up Jordy like, Barrett when he was trying yes, to break out. Yeah, and then they knocked Jordy on, Barrett. I think, from like the the, the next yes, offload I, or I just, something. I just Wonderhill was just absolute I th- for me. Yeah. I don't know who got who got man of the match. Do you know? I think Itoji did actually. Did I, 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 I think mean, understandably, but 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 Underhill can't have been far behind him. Yeah. It's just, I, I mean, I just, everything, just, they started on the front foot, mm. what, 84 seconds or whatever it was for the try. Yeah. Um, I just, you could not have, when did, all honesty, when did you believe, or when did you start thinking, right, this is really, this is our day, this, we're on. And secondly, when did you really think, actually, we, this is now, we're going to win? Um, When, hmm, just before the surveyor try, yeah. I was thinking, I think we're going to do this. And then we yeah. gave away that try. Like we, there was a penalty, uh, I think there was a, a kick to the corner, a weak English line out that the timing was wrong and surveyor just dived over. And suddenly I was like, oh, shit, oh. this is yeah. it. We're done. We're done. Yeah, we're going to lose confidence. But the, I mean, the... And then when, when did I, when did I think we were going to win it? I get not, not until very late because it was still quite close, but, but suddenly there was this it's realization. Funny, isn't it? 12 like, points down, you still like 76 minutes going. Uh, like they score quick, they that's score the thing, a quick score. They get a quick score. They get oh, the ball back yeah, 20 yeah, yeah. phases through or something. Yeah, yeah, so. exactly. Um, um but the, the, there was two things that I, I absolutely love. One was the, the V, the response to the hacker. Yes. Was, and, yes. And, and, and Farrell's little smile. And it was like, yeah. Oh, oh, this is going to be good. Um, and then the way the England team responded after those two tries were disallowed. A, I think that was bullshit. I think both tries were tries. Um, <laughs> but the way England didn't get frustrated and then give away silly penalties, you know, or force anything in the sort of the, the five minutes after those tries were disallowed. I thought that was brilliant. That showed such a maturity such a maturity from that team because like if you think back even just back in the six nations or last year against uh was it south africa during the summer the discipline yeah. was a real issue and there'd be these you know patches where three players would just see red and, and give away penalties and points and possession and territory um but there was proper proper control from that england side it was really impressive really impressive um so i mean yeah, so I mean, it's oh, I can't actually. I mean, I'm still in a bit of a bit of shock of just how incredibly good England were. Mm. Do you, so okay. So before we move on to the Bockies, mm. do do you think England can repeat that performance? Because there's a lot of talk about. So actually, I don't know if you saw this. Apparently, Warren Gatlin came out and said something like, yeah. "Oh, yeah. you know, England might be a bit concerned, that he might be a bit worried that actually they've played their final, they've played their get yeah. their best game, you know, uh, in in the semis." And Eddie Jones responded with, "Well, I look forward to Warren telling me what it's like to play in a third, fourth playoff. Yeah, uh, tell him to enjoy the third and fourth yeah. game. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, awesome response. It's good chat. It is it's good, good chat. chat. It is good chat. Um, but yeah, do I mean? Genuine concern. Have, have have they played their best game one game early? Look, there is that. There is that to to get that intensity. Mm. And the problem is they're going to come up against the Springbok side, who are um, with pro- probably the most physical side in world rugby. Oh, violently um, brutal. You know, and I think the way they set up in it in, in lots of facets, I think it's going to be intense. Yeah. You know, it's going to be drainingly intense mm. and I think South Africa will will not mind being the ugliest, grittiest mm. thing and just wearing them down. Anything exciting they will just completely stamp all over and just yeah. destroy. Yeah. Um so look, I think it's gonna be tough. Mm. I, I mean, England are favourites. Yes. And I think after, I mean after that after that semi final you can see why. Like if, yeah. if I was because I was watching the game on, on Sunday then and thinking, not desperately trying not to think anything that could jinx it, but like, 
If yeah. England play in that same way again, as they did against the All Blacks, I can't see any team in the world staying with them. But I am very, very concerned that they will be able to repeat that that level of quality, intensity, accuracy, discipline again. Um, it will be interesting also because the... Uh... The Springboks will play a different game to New Zealand, right? New Zealand yeah. expect, are expected to control the, the situation mm. in, in, when I mean control is the tempo and the pace yeah. in, in yeah, a yeah. fast, frenetic, no one can normally keep up with him, whereas they mm. got out, they got out all blacked basically. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, 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 yeah. In, in, in a variety of ways, but I think South Africa will play a very, one thing I've, you know, Rassi Rasmus, the SA coach is good at is, a playing to what they've got, mm. playing to their strengths, knowing where they are, and also B playing game by game and working mm. out what they're going to do, and going this is this is our strengths in this context, and we're going to do that. So it'll be interesting to see how they play against England. Yeah, I, I think it's a really fair point because the, you know, there, there was a lot of criticism about the Wales South Africa game, and it wasn't uh, it, it was it was tense. I mean, it was absolutely it was poor, but tense. It, yeah, exactly. It was poor quality, but but really tense. Um, <laughs> but I, I say, I was watching this and saying to a few people, like, it doesn't matter. All they need to do is win. No yeah. one, well, you know, South Africa now in the final. No one cares how they got there. No one will go back and go, oh yeah, they got the final. But do you remember how poor they were? And it's like no one cares. Yeah. All that matters is getting one more point than the opposition come that final exactly. whistle. And that's and all And they did that, they did that very well. You know, they grant, like I say, they, they absolutely grounded out and you can, they are able to do that. And they are one of the few teams, like if you think back to the quarter final against Japan and in that first half, Japan were all over them. Like they, they weren't yeah. getting the points for, for, that they maybe uh, should have done, but they were all over the bockies. And then at half time, they, they changed that game plan and just went, right, we're just going to stick it up the shirt, play power rugby, yeah. keep it tight. Yeah. And they just knocked the Japanese about and then just yeah. gradually drained them, gradually beat them down and ended up, you know, w- winning reasonably comfortably. And there aren't many sides who can change game plan halfway through a game. Like it's been one of the criticisms of teams like, uh, Australia and Ireland and things like that, that actually, on their day, really good, but can they change when things aren't working with Plan A? And I wonder what will happen if um, England come out and play a certain tactic and mm. it doesn't work. Because England have been known to, in yeah. the Six Nations, when they've struggled, the last two Six Nations, yeah, yeah, yeah. they've been very one-dimensional as a side. Yeah. When, and when it hasn't worked, they they've, haven't seemed to come up with ideas. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see if they come out and do it in South Africa, just do something else. Yeah. Um, and I yeah, think tactically yeah. it's going to be a great game to watch. I, I'm not convinced it's going to be a 35-33 tri-fest. No, it's going to be tight, isn't it? It's going to be tight. Yeah, it's going to be tight um, and tense. But, I um, think, uh, I mean, the thing is with South Africa, they haven't had their really big good game of the world cup yet you know they lost the opening one against the all blacks they then beat the sort of the, the the minnows in the group stage they didn't play amazingly well against japan but they they won no. they you know, they played yeah. well enough and they won they played well enough against wales and they've won they haven't had that really yeah. big performance and and they have got play you know faf faf uh, at 9 uh, K- uh yeah uh Khaleesi at uh, eight yeah. captain he has yeah. not had a really good game yet for the you know in, yeah. in this world cup peter step peter step to toy on saturday oh. number 7 yeah sorry sunday was just just everywhere yeah he's 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 Bloke. special just, he's special just everywhere um I mean, it's quite, you've, you've, it's, sorry got me gone it's just quite funny he had the ball and he he ran through two two welsh guys mm. and then bounced off them and then because the way he bounced, he actually lost all his support. And I think they yeah. ended up giving away a penalty. Yeah. Cause no, Cause, no, cause could Kitch, Kitchoff him. couldn't, yeah. but he's actually, I mean, he actually, cause everyone expects him to get tackled yeah. and he yeah, just yeah, didn't. Yeah, I was yeah, like, it's yeah, quite yeah. funny. He's, he's probably uh, trying to get tackled. And one of the things actually that, um, I think interestingly, both England and the Springboks have, which a lot of teams don't have is genuine scary pace on the wing. Because quite yes. you know, quite a few teams have, have kind of got those utility backs and they've, they've stuck people on the wing. You know, maybe more of a fullback or a centre, but actually we need them out on the wing kind of thing. Um, yeah. Whereas, proper yeah, South Africa in particular have got 
proper proper gas and they've got the best names my bimpy love oh, that guy that is love that, guy. that is my son's favorite player <laughs> yeah i think we should start start calling your little ball my bimpy now anyway e- every bimpy. time every time the spring box are on the field he just shouts my bimpy at the screen brilliant. so brilliant um so he's he's been brainwashed which is good um so <laughs> I mean the Welsh game very quickly, and then we'll talk mm. about the. Although we've been meandering through the final and the, and last week, um, I think that is one of the most tense rugby matches I've ever watched. South Africa Wales. I've just yes, I, it was brutal. I, I constantly felt for eighty minutes that there was a moment where someone would do something amazing. Mm. I, you know, it it was you just felt one one pass or one little mistake, mm. and then Wales would have scored and gone. Yeah. You know, whatever it was, it just it was, know, so it, clear, but, it was so tight. It was so tight, and I, I was, yeah. It, it was, it's one it was of the tightest. It's one of the tightest games I think I've ever seen. Yeah, it was just in um, terms of the intensity to not want to lose. The fear of loss was huge. That and that. Do you know what? I, I was I was thinking about this. It it really did feel like that. Like each team was waiting for the other to make it make a, a go, and mm. then was going to try and like snuff that out and then counter. Like no yeah. one was move. It was like you know teenagers at a, at a school disco. No one was actually going to make that first move. And I think in the end, South Africa just managed to do enough to to make those moves. I think there's a, a nice little break from Andre Pollard when he, he sort of ran direct from yeah. fly half and he made a good ground. And then Dialende was just so hard to stop. Um, he but, actually slapped Dan Bigger away. Yeah. If you, if you watch it again, he literally was like, no. Get off me. Get off me. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, I do feel very sorry for Wales, actually. But I think Wales, in a way, they kind of like, they kind of had the, a similar symptom to Ireland. Like, I think they came into this tournament having played their best rugby already. Um, and, you know, Wales had played so well in the Six Nations, but, there's just something that didn't feel quite right about them going all the way. Yeah. Just, I mean, I feel sorry for Alan Wynne Jones. I think he's a phenomenal man, leader. Yeah. Him and Gatland um, actually. Yeah. I feel very sorry. Yeah, for, and Jonathan both. Davies. I mean, he's a, he's an absolute so, star. He's quality. Oh mate. Absolute a- absolutely quality. insane. But absolutely onto insane. the final. Um, <gasps> yes. I've got a c- couple of facts and stats. For oh you. yes. Love it. So, do you, oh, I'm going to ask you, would you like it in a quiz format or just the facts? Mate, quiz. Quiz me up. Do you remember the 2007 final score? Oh, uh, no. I, I, know, I know England lost. Um, but 15-6 with that controversial 15, TMO 15, line six. call. Um, South Africa played England in World Cup rugby matches four times. Mm-hmm. How many wins each way? Ooh, uh, th- ooh. How many times? Three times so far. Four, four times. Four times so far. I wouldn't be surprised if it was four to the Bockies. No, three, three, three times, Bockies. Three to South Africa, um, um, of which twice was in the 2007 World Cup. Uh, and... Back in the 1999 quarterfinal. Um, oh, right. England's only win over them was 2003 when they went on to win it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so no team has ever lost a World Cup game and gone on to win it. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. So the, yeah, so the Bockies have lo- lost their opening game, didn't they? So South Africa have lost their opening game to New Zealand. Yeah. In South Africa, sorry, in 2007, England lost their opener against South Africa and then lost. And then lost. In the final. France, 2011, oh, lost their yeah. open game, and then went into the final. Blacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Head to head across England, South Africa in their history, 42 Test matches. England have won 15. South Africa, really? 25, two draws. But well, I'd lo- what, what's the last like five years or four years or I something? Don't know, like that? I don't have those stats, but their last meeting was at Twickenham. And it was twelve eleven to England. Yes, with that cr- that, that Far- Owen Farrell totally legal tackle. I mean, he, yes. he, he was bear hugging yeah. him. He was so yeah. wrapped around him, it was like a Christmas so, present. Wrapped he was, around, he was wrapped yeah, exactly. Around. He was, put he a bow was, on his head, yeah, yeah. and he would have been. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah, uh, you'd have to pay extra for like gift wrapping at John Lewis for that. That was insane. Interestingly enough, Eddie Jones has had a phenomenal career, hasn't he? he 2003, he's a 2003 bit of a legend. Australia, yeah. obviously to the final. Um, he was part of the coaching team that beat England in 07. Yep. 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 He was the coach that beat the Springboks with Japan. Yep. Uh, and now they come up against each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. mate, it's, it's, it could not have ended up better, really. I know. And I've, I've actually got, uh, money bizarrely on the spring box to, uh, not, not to win the final. Well, I mean, yes, to win the final, but not to win the final against England, like, but way back before the top, back, back in May or something like that. So I forget. So you got, what, what odds did you get on that? Like nine to one, I think it was. Um, spunged on 50 quid at nine to one. Mate. I, 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 but but I w- I'm very happy to lose the money. I, let me make this very clear. I am very happy to lose the money. Um, <laughs> okay, so, yeah. so where is your money at now? <sighs> Look, e- England should win it. England should win it. I think England are the better side. I think if England, e- even if England come close to playing the way they did against the All Blacks, I think that um, I think that they they will beat. South Africa I think the biggest there are a couple of risks one is discipline I think that the, the England can cope with the physical nature of the box by that 80 minutes yeah I think they can I think they can I think Wonderhill is going to eat that up for breakfast however I think I'm concerned that that England could slip back into old discipline habits, and 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 the Bockies are one of those sides that can get under your skin and properly wind you up. Um, Estebeth is an absolute nightmare. Uh, you know, well, I don't know, I don't know if you saw, but uh, RJ Snayman, who's the, the sort of replacement lock the, that comes on, the serial killer. He, yeah, he does. He, <laughs> yeah, he does. <laughs> he looks like an Kansas. <laughs> Kansas City's most wanted. The Kansas um, Kansas City statement. He's like, yeah, he's, he's absolutely. Sorry, yeah, he, uh, I think, I think Wales gave away a penalty for holding on, or mm. actually, I don't know what it was, but he was right next to Alan Wynne Jones yeah. when the penalty was awarded, and he just patted him on the chest and grinned at him, and he just think. The co- I want to I mean, smack you in the face. Exactly. But <laughs> I couldn't reach, the, to be fair. But no, um, yeah. But I mean, it's just it's just comedy. So you're right. The Springboks will they will do everything to yeah. make it as the ugliest 18 minutes that the English players have ever been involved in. Yeah. Um, so so discipline. I don't is one think issue. they will care. Yeah, discipline is one issue. I I think you're right as well. I wonder if England want to win in style, not like as in flashy style, yeah, yeah, or, yeah. but just they want to go out and win this. Um, yeah. And that could that could cause issues. I also am worried by Faf. Uh, I just feel like in turn a game. Um, yeah, I'm worried by Faf. I, I I'm, I'm worried he's going to turn us inside out. Even even when he's not kicking kicking well and, mm. and not at his peak, he still seems to influence. I mean, the one, did you watch the game on Sunday, the Wales yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He kicked, that one kick he did near the end when he sort of banana kicked it down the line mm. and it bounced just, and I'm like, the guy is just, he just does such. He's got such talent. He, he's got vision. I mean, yeah. the irony can't see over anyone, but he's got yeah. vision. <laughs> well, he's um, got his hair in his so, eyes as well. So, so well, exactly. Um, um yeah. But, I, I so actually, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Faf is. I think a Faf's factor. a concern. I think the gas outside is a concern. I am. Also, I'd be interesting to see what Eddie Jones does at 10. Because he dropped Ford for Australia. He brought Ford back for New Zealand. What will he do with What was his Ford reason power? for dropping Ford against Australia? Uh, I didn't, Is that because of the, yeah. the power that running through? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so. But the, if you think about Australia, there's nothing in particular... They had Kara, what's his name? Um, Corobetti. Who's, yeah, at centre. Oh, no, uh, Karevi. Yeah, but, Karevi. Then, but then, you know, the, you know, you, you line him up with, with, with Tuolangi and you'd say, have some of that. But, 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 to, 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 is Tuolangi not a great tackler, is he? Uh, I think he's perfectly solid. I don't think, you know, um, he's, he's not like Sam Underhill kind of thing. No one is, but, um, no, it's true. I, I, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens there. Be interesting to see. I, I, th- I think he will play. As long as there's no injuries, I think you'll play exactly the same side. Because exactly the same side. If if you do not keep 
Gil Andy quiet, yeah. which is very hard to do. Yeah. I think that will be a thing. I've got, this is my heart speaking, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and let's be honest, my head is very, very poor. Um, in terms of <laughs> unreliable, I think. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry. Inconsistent. Yeah. Patchy. Oh, no, no, patchy. Mate, it's consistent. It's consistent. It's yes. Just... <laughs> you're right. You're right. It's patchy <laughs> in terms of, um, but I've just got this feeling. I'm talking about him jokingly, but Mapimpi's going to, I think oh. they're going to, I don't think they will kick as much as they did against Wales. No, I mean, I, 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 again, I can see, I can imagine if South Africa get out to a lead, I think they're good. I, I, I think they can shut up shop and be hard to, to break down. I, yeah. I, you know, I think if you go like player for player, I think England have got better players. Um, and I think Jones is probably a better coach, but. South Africa are a good, good side. You know, they mm. really are a good side and they have been winning ugly. And that is impressive because a lot of sides cannot do that. Um, I, yeah, it's going to, yeah. Okay. I'm, so I'm, let's, I'm very let's wrap, let's wrap this up. Go on then. Final predictions. I'll speak to you on the other side. What is your predictions though? <laughs> Lay it on the table. No, oh, last time I did that, I got in trouble, but, um, um, okay. I, th- I think England are going to win. God, I hope this doesn't come back to haunt me. <laughs> this is, mate, how arrogant is this of me to think that I can possibly have any impact on the result by what oh, I I'm say out loud? Box, I mean, so this is sorry, crazy. Man. It's absolutely crazy. I think England will, will win 23-12. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I right. think, I think, because I think actually it'll be close, but I think there'll be a late try. As, as, as South to, Africa to try, the, yeah, the as South Africa try and force it, uh, I think there'll be a late try. Maybe it's like, yeah, maybe it's 23 10, 23 12. I, th- I, th- I think, I think, um, yeah, Eng- Eng- England to win, England to win. Sam Underhill to accept my marriage proposal. Oh, now we're really, in now or- we're in really that, in, in fantasy order. land. Yeah, in that order. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so come on then, come on then. South Africa to win. Oh. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna go 18 14. Oh, damn, that's gonna be tight. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hurt. An ugly, crappy 80 minutes of my life, but I think. A third title. A third title. That would be, I mean. That'd be amazing. I mean, you think that that would tie the, uh, the All Blacks, which is pretty. A third title mad. since 95. You know, so, so that's. What's yeah. that? Toy, uh, I can't do the maths, mate. Help me out. Five, uh, mm-hmm. 24 years, three, six three titles Cups. in six. I mean, that's not bad, mate. 50% win record. That's pretty Is impressive. That, right? that can't be right. We've got, we've got, got something wrong there. 99, 2003, seven. It's the seventh one. So it'll be seven. There it'll be go. three out of seven. I mean, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Um, I'll take that. Yeah. I mean, I'll look, that, the good but... news is either way, the podcast is right. The podcast Mate, gets a winner. This is our first time. We definitely guaranteed. We are a winner. guaranteed a win. We are guaranteed a win. So I, I wish you all the best. I really I do. Absolutely wish you all the very best. Let's hope. However, the Northern Hemisphere bring it on home. I hope there's a um, super over, <laughs> and, <laughs> and it goes to number uh, of penalty uh, goals scored. Well, yeah, and exactly, yeah. and they just go back to. See a Khaleesi having to bowl the last over. That's all I want. I th- and then we're fine. If, if we're looking for silver linings, also basically the same time zone wins as well, no matter what. Like roughly, Mate. you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's a win win for the meridian. The middle of the world dominates. Yeah. The meridian wins, no matter what. Yes. Awesome. The meridian wins. Awesome. What, a, what an end. The meridian wins. <laughs> Meridian's the real winner here. Yes. So, uh, oh, actually, the, sorry. On, before, just before the bombshell, go. before the bombshell, one quick question for you. Question without notice. Does the third, fourth place playoff um, have any place anymore in the World Cup? Yes. Okay, great. Thanks so much. And I hope you all have... <laughs> no, I, think, I think it does. I actually think... I think you mentioned... A, a few weeks ago to have like a plate version where they keep playing. Yes. That I would um, love to see that. I would love to see in, in a lot of, okay, not as much. It's a lot more amateur sports, mm. but any world cup in an amateur context, they, they, you play 
all the way down to the bottom. So you would mm. actually play, you finish 1 to 20th. Yes. Yeah, so I mean, God, you can play, you imagine you that? That would be amazing. Like a round robin, so, a whole round robin. Yeah, I mean, you just play. So I, I, to answer your question, at least a third or fourth. Yeah. There's got to be a, there's got to be a medal, doesn't there? So. Well, so, so I, I just feel for the players, like looking, particularly the Welsh players, like looking at the, some of those interviews and the, the devastation in those guys. I'm like, I, I could, could not have the heart to tell you, okay, guys, we've got to get up for this game. I'm, I'd be like, forget it. Let's just, let's just call it quits and go <laughs> home. We're, we're done. We're done. Gatlin's going to play because no one wants to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gatlin and Hansen scrumming down. That'd be awesome. Mate. And Shane Williams coming out. Oh, um, I don't know if you actually to finish this. Sorry, there's, there's something funny things, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. um, is it, who's the ex Welsh scrum off? Is it Mike Phillips? No. Yes. 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 He was, he did the punditry on, oh, yeah, yeah, on yeah, the yeah, game. Yeah. Yes. He, after the game, you could not have got a more bitter person. You just went, it was the most boring game I've ever seen. <laughs> South Africa was so boring. And the banner, our banner just sat this smugly going. Yeah, but, but we won. But we won. So, I mean, I don't mean, really, right. It doesn't, yeah. there's no, you don't get prizes for, but it's, but it's, you might get a third, you might get third prize for not being boring. Yeah. I mean, the good news is you, you can win, yeah. you can win a bronze yeah. medal. Um, yes. So anyway, yeah. that's, I just thought I'd finish with that little, little tidbit, but it's been, mate, it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Yes. As always, I'm glad to be back in the saddle yeah, with you. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Um, absolutely. Oh, we've got some promotional, uh, stuff coming out so i hope you oh, get that yeah. Up. yeah 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 that'd be quite funny <laughs> Joke, jokes are plenty to come um, exactly yes so. mate uh a pleasure as always everybody please get involved uh tweet follow us on twitter ask us questions give us abuse lots of banter you know we'll, we'll do lots of questions and polls and surveys during the week to get everyone's thoughts on on stuff yeah. but um, look thank you very much for listening um for another week and uh see you soon all right go well cheers buddy go well